Lately, many tools are being developed for Blender. So if you want some fresh add-ons to make things easier for you, these add-ons might help. From cleaning up a rigging, to rain, rocks, and generating 3D houses, there is a bit of everything. So let's dive right into it. We're gonna start with a new add-on called Boolean Quad Ready. So if you've ever used Boolean in Blender, you know they can be both powerful and messy sometimes. So this add-on tries to fix that messy part. Basically, it is built to keep your geometry clean, especially after you cut your mesh and instead of leaving a trail of angles and chaotic faces, it leads into creating quad-friendly topology. The add-on gives you some repair tools, in addition to modifier workflows and even options to merge or simplify after a Boolean operation. It's not fully automatic, it still needs some guiding, but it feels like it is made for people who want more control without starting from scratch every time. Best case, your mesh survives complex cuts and stays animation friendly. And in the worst case, I have to admit, you've got way less cleanup to do, which is not too bad if we are being honest. Still around the topic of modeling, we have an add-on called Resample Mesh. And this new add-on is kind of a Blender's topology reset button. It's not traditional topology, because you're not creating animation-friendly edge loops, but you will get control over how vertices are distributed across your mesh. This is especially helpful with scanned assets, in addition to decimated models or any dense geometry that needs to be reorganized. You've got a few interpolated methods to choose from. Akima, Cutmore Rum, and Polynomial. They can help smooth things out or reduce poly count while keeping the overall shape pretty much the same. For example, a knot redistributes points along splines and smooth softens mesh areas and distribute evens out vertex spacing. You can connect loops, circulate edge flows, and use optimized mesh to clean up zero area faces and stray vertices. To be honest, this is not fully suited for closed edge loops, like cylinders and stuff, but you can still handle those with a combo of resample and circularize if you know the arch angle. Now we're gonna jump into rigging with a new add-on called Bone and Weight Splitter. And this add-on is all about making armatures more manageable, especially when you're dealing with imported characters or rigs with tons of bones influencing the same area. The add-on lets you split vertex weights between multiple bones and you can do that cleanly with the option to limit how many bones can affect each vertex. And this is super important if you're prepping a model for a game engine, for example. It also includes some pretty thoughtful features that can speed things up. For starters, you can automatically split bones into a set number of segments, and the add-on redistributes vertex weights for you, which helps to avoid manual weight painting. There is also a preview system for visualizing smooth weight transitions, so you can dial in blending before committing, and you don't have to manually link everything. Just pick your mesh and vertex group, and it auto-detects the right armature. It also supports symmetry, which works across multiple objects, and it lets you stay in whatever mode you're working in, whether it be object, edit, pose, or weight paint. Basically, it will adapt to your workflow instead of making you change how you rig. Now, let's talk about something more fun, with a new add-on called Petrify. So, if you've ever needed to make rocks, statues, ruins, or anything with that aged, and whether it's still vibe, I think this add-on got you covered. It's not just one tool, but it is like a full rock making toolkit. At its core, it is built around modular geometry node modifiers, which let you procedurally shape and stylize rocks from simple base meshes. You can stack modifiers, tweak them, randomize seeds, and all of a sudden, you will get an endless variation of chunky, eroded stones. You're not just locked into one look either. There are a dozen rock presets that you can start with, plus six built-in materials and a bunch of shader nodes if you want to build your own. It also includes over a hundred texture maps and sculpting brushes made from height maps, which is useful when you want to go beyond procedural and add some handcrafted details. Next, we're gonna talk about the Fireflow add-on. Fireflow is more about staying organized than anything else. This add-on brings a file and asset management system right into Blender's UI which is something a lot of bigger projects actually desperately need. So if you've ever spent too much time fixing broken file paths or trying to track down where the text went, then I think this add-on is gonna stop that from happening again in the first place. Because it gives you the tools for relinking missing files. 
in addition to browsing project folders, creating new structured directories, and even batch organizing. Nothing too fancy actually, but very functional. It really shines in terms of workflow, when you are juggling lots of scenes and libraries. It is also good for your sanity, because who wanna do all that work? Next, we're gonna talk about a new add-on called PBR Texture and Material Generator. So if you're working with downloaded textures or building up an asset library, you know how tedious wiring up materials can get, but this add-on can keep things actually simple. It basically automates the whole process of setting up typical PBR materials. So you can import textures and it handles the rest, base color, normal, roughness, metallic, and even displacement, which can all be hooked in one go. But it doesn't just stop there. I mean, at node setup, you will get sliders for adjusting things like normal intensity, roughness strength, and displacement scale directly in the viewport. It also supports generating missing maps from a single input texture, and more recently, it added seamless texture creation, which is handy for ground services or tileable assets. And you can export the generated maps, in addition to saving materials directly in Blender's asset browser. And you can switch between materials without redoing everything. This can be practically useful for game devs, texturing artists, or anyone doing quick look dev work. This add-on is great, not like Substance Painter, but it can be a time saver. The next add-on we're gonna talk about is called iForge, which is a Blender dedicated eye generator. Even though it is focused on one thing, it can give you a lot. Basically, it gives you procedural control over everything. Iris design, pupil dilation, sclera veins, and even the lens effect like Cornell bulge and reflection highlights. You can also create stylized or realistic eyes, in addition to the ability to swap out patterns and adjust in shader complexity, all without leaving the interface, which is amazing. It also includes a rigged version, so you can animate blinking, look direction, and even focus changes. This add-on can actually save you a lot of time. I mean, whether you are working on multiple characters, or just you want to focus on expression and realism without modeling every part manually. And the best part, it is non-destructive, which makes iteration easier. The next add-on we're going to talk about is called Time Master. And this one is a slow motion tool built to give you precise control over animation and simulation timing inside Blender. It's split into two parts, one for actions, one for physics, and it lets you slow things down or speeding them up from character keyframes to particle simulations. For animations, you can keyframe playback speed directly, making it simple to drop in slow-mo effects exactly where you want them to be. On the physics side of things, it scans the scene and lists all the supported types, like cloth, fluids, or soft bodies, so you can tweak their time scale with a single slider, which is very efficient. It's not meant for procedural or geometry node setups, but for baked simulations and classic animation workflows. From what I can see, it works well, but just a heads up, it is best to apply the slow-mo effect after your animation is done, just so you know. The next new add-on we're gonna talk about is called AeroFi, which is pretty simple in concept, but one that can hopefully turn out to be surprisingly useful. With this add-on, you get a way to generate editable and customizable arrows right inside Blender. This can be good for UI overlays, explainer content, presentation, or some motion graphic work if you are interested in that. The add-on basically uses curved objects so you can animate the arrows, bend them, adjust thickness, and switch between different styles like straight or curved, dotted, filled, you get the point. It is lightweight, but well integrated. So if you are making tutorials, technical demos, or anything that needs visual guides or call out in 3D spaces, then this add-on I think can add some interesting visual effects. Now we're gonna talk about Sanctus Woodworks. So if you've ever needed to build wooden shaders from scratch in Blender, you know how much trial and error it can involve. Grains, gloss, bump, color variation, and all those things that you have to adjust and get right, because it takes time but Sanctus Woodworks can give you a clean head start with a set of procedural wood materials that are really usable out of the box. You will have a library of wood types like maple, walnut, pine, and more, with each shader built to be editable inside the shader editor. These aren't big textures, everything is procedural, so you don't have to worry about tiling or resolution. You can scale the wood grain, adjust color tone, or tweak gloss to fit stylized or photorealistic scenes. 
this is especially a solid choice for furniture models, interiors, or props where wood is the main material, which can save you time and add levels of consistency across the board. I mean to your assets that you will have in your environments. The next add-on we're gonna talk about is called Rain Simulator, which does exactly what it says in the box. It adds procedural rainfall to your scene, and the interesting thing is that it handles both simulation part and the visual effects part. Droplets, splashes, ripples, and even wet surface shaders, if you need them, it has everything. You can control the rain intensity, drop speed, and direction, so you're not locked into a single weather look. And it works nicely for animations, especially when you want that cinematic rainy mood. But it is not just about particles. This is the case because it includes some clever shader integration to make objects look like they are actually reacting to the environment. And the good thing, you won't need a massive VFX setup to get convincing rainfall. If you are doing outdoor shots or moody environments, this can actually help you sell the atmosphere without a ton of manual work. In a similar vein, we have Sweat Simulator, which can actually bring a layer of realism to your scenes. So whether it is sweat on skin, condensation, or just on a cold can, or fog on a window, this add-on gives you micro-moisture effects that can react and move across different surfaces. And this is especially important for close-up shots. Now, the setup can be easy. You just need to select a single object and hit Apply Sweat Simulator and it generates a separate moisture mesh that follows your model's surface. From there, you've got different intuitive controls, like density, speed, droplet size, and lifetime. And it uses simulation nodes, so you can play around with the movement, and you can do that in real time. You can even keyframe bursts of sweat and bake the final simulation for performance. There is also support for instance droplets, and contour-aware dripping, customizable noise or randomness, and this can all play nicely with blender shaders so you don't have to worry about texturing. Last but not least, we have Modular Suburban House Creator. And this one can help you get quickly generated house models that actually make architectural sense. It's modular, so you can build houses from reusable components like walls, roofs, windows, and doors. But it also includes logic to make sure things fit together properly. And there you have it, guys. If you are interested in one of these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.